Welcome back guys. Uh, we are going to be talking about the cell membrane today. So let's go ahead and get started. All right. So first off, we need to ask ourselves, what types of cells have a cell membrane? Well, I think that we've talked about this before, Ms. Hines. It was my understanding that all cells have to have a cell oh, membrane. So this type of cell, which is a plant cell, and this type of cell, which is a animal cell. And I know the difference because of the shape. Plant cells are square, animal cells are round. Um, and these are both these are both going to be eukaryotic cells. Okay. And we know that they're eukaryotic cells because they both have this really important structure inside of them, um, and that important structure is something called the nucleus or right. the control center. So all eukaryotic cells have a cell membrane, but also all prokaryotes. So all living things on the planet, if they're made up of cells, and they all have to be if they're living, have a cell membrane. So it's something that we all have in common. So it must be an important structure. Yeah, so let's start finding out some more about it. So it's important to know that the cell membrane goes by many names. So on quizzes, tests, the SOL, you could see it by any of these names. So one of those names is the plasma membrane. Yeah, and we've actually been using that term a lot in class, yeah. like on our Venn diagrams, on our homeworks, and also on our bell ringers. So cell membrane, plasma membrane, that makes two. So some other names that you might see today and in the coming weeks is phospholipid bilayer. That's a mouthful. Yes, it is. We're going to break that down today. Okay, so a phospholipid bilayer. And then lastly, you might see something called the fluid mosaic, mosaic model. All right, so there are four different names, but it doesn't matter what we call it. Because it still is the cell membrane. It's right? the structure that all cells have in common. And even though it has all of these names, it really just has one really important job for the cell. And what is that? So it's going to control what's allowed to enter and leave the cell. So its job is to maintain homeostasis, which we've talked about before. Homeostasis is one of the most important characteristics of life. And if we're not maintaining balance or homeostasis inside the cell, the cell will die. Right. So another way of thinking about it, we can say that the cell membrane is kind of like the bouncer at a club, right? right. It controls whether or not you can get in the club if you're cool like Ms. Hines and I, or whether or not you're not allowed to go in the club because you haven't met whatever requirements there are to actually get in. So the cell membrane is a bouncer essentially, and it's really, really, really important for the cell. So what things would be allowed in the cell, Ms. Hines? So the types of things that the cell would have to bring in might be things like food. Oh, obviously. Water, oxygen, things that it needs in order to function. Okay, that makes sense. And then what things need to be able to get out of the cell? So waste needs to be able to get out. Sometimes, actually, water needs to be able to get out of the cell. And then also things like carbon dioxide. That's right, because that is a waste product of right. a metabolic process that happens in our body. All right, so let's talk about how these things are actually able to pass over the membrane. But in order to talk about that, we actually need to talk about what the membrane is made up of because its structural makeup determines what its function actually is. So let's dive into that. But so before we do, go ahead and pause the video and answer your stop and jot questions. Make sure your teacher checks your answers before you move on. So the cell membrane is made up of three main things. The first thing which makes up the majority of the cell membrane is what's called phospholipids. Which well, helps to explain why it's sometimes called the phospholipid bilayer. Right. All right. So also, there are also special types of proteins that are associated with the cell membrane. And we're going to talk about each one of these in greater detail here in a second. And then the last thing that's in the cell membrane, which you may not expect, is cholesterol. And you've probably heard this word before. You've maybe seen it on a cereal box. This is a different type of cholesterol mm -hmm. that we're going to talk about today. Yeah, so not all cholesterol is bad. Yeah, it's good cholesterol. Okay, so let's start off by talking about phospholipids since, again, they make up most of the cell membrane. So over here we have a picture of a phospholipid. It yes. kind of looks like a man with... No body, just a head and, and two little legs. That's right. So a phospholipid, they're actually structurally very easy to identify. They have this big circular head mm -hmm. at the top, and that's what we're going to talk about first. So this head has some specific characteristics because it's made up of something in particular, which helps to explain the phospholipid name. Right. It's made up of something called phosphate, which is sometimes just abbreviated with a P. Yeah. Which helps to explain the whole phos. 
faux lipid. Right. Oh, yeah. Very nice. And the head is a polar molecule. And what does that mean, Miss Heinz? So polar, I'm trying to remember. I think that that meant... Water. Water. Water was polar. Water was polar. So if I think about water, I remember water has charges. Oh. So what does that mean about my polar head here? Um, it means that it also must have some charges on it. Awesome. So my phosphate head has a charge. Okay. okay, so we know that right now, so it's polar, and because it's polar, it likes water. It gets along with water, and we That's have a right. special name for that. We're going to say that the head is hydrophilic, and if we break down that word, hydro means water, and philic means loving. Ooh. So our polar head, which makes sense because it's a lot like water, um, loves water. So it's in love with water and really gets along with it and can interact with it in lots of different ways. Okay. All right, so now that we've talked about our phosphate polar head on our phospholipid, let's now talk about those two legs or tails mm. that are coming off on the bottom. And these tails are actually fatty acids. Oh, wait, I've heard that before. Don't put your lipids on my fatty acids. Right, so these tails are lipids. lipids. So phospholipids. There's where the name comes from. So let's talk mm. about some things that we know about our fatty acid tails. So one thing I remember about lipids, like oil, is that they do not get along well they with hate, water. They hate water. Ugh. Why is that? Well, because they don't have a charge. So they don't know how to interact with water, and water doesn't know how to interact with it. So instead of being polar, it's going to be non-polar, or Very not nice. like water. And instead of them being hydrophilic, meaning they love water, they have a fear of water. They're going to be hydro phobic or That's water right. fearing. So we have this interesting structure now. We have this phospholipid. The head loves water because yeah. it's polar and the tails hate water because they're nonpolar. Right. That that behavioral difference is actually very important when it comes to talking about um, our cell membrane and why it behaves the way that it does. So right. let's go ahead and talk about okay. that. So we're going to go ahead and play a video clip for you that's going to talk about how phospholipids are arranged in the cell, and then we'll jot down some important things. Yeah. See if you can identify some of the things that we've already discussed in the notes. All cell membranes have the same lipid bilayer structure. The bilayer consists of two sheets of phospholipid molecules oriented in opposite directions. The heads of the phospholipids face outward. They are attracted to the watery environments inside and outside the cell. The hydrophobic phospholipid tails are sandwiched between the heads. This minimizes their interactions with water. All right, so straight away, if I'm looking at this picture, I already noticed that there are some interesting things going on. I, I noticed these circles these circles. And mm -hmm. so what do we know about these circles? So we know that these circles are phosphate, that they are the heads, so okay. the phosphate heads. We know that they are nonpolar Ooh. and we know that we know that they are polar. polar. Which means that they love water. So right. what word can we use for them? They are hydro Billic. All right. And then if we look at the middle, we have these tails that are facing each other. So mm -hmm. you notice that we have two layers, which is why we call it a phospholipid bilayer, because bi, bi means two. Those tails are made up of fatty acids, so they're lipids. So do mm -hmm. we love water or do we hate water, Ms. Hines? We hate water in the middle. The middle is nonpolar okay. and hydrophobic. Very nice. So we basically just reviewed some of the terms that we've talked about on our previous slide. Right. So let's see if we can practice on another picture, because we're going to see lots of different pictures that represent the cell membrane, plasma membrane, fluid mosaic model, phospholipid right. bilayer. So here's another picture showing the phospholipid bilayer. Um, and so again, these two areas here, collectively, what can you tell me about them? Um, well, I know that they're made up of phosphates. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and call them the heads, Okay. because we've used that term. Um, I know that they love water. So we can say that they're um, polar because they have to have the same, same chemical makeup as water to like them. And to love water, we know that they are hydrophilic. Now let's talk about that center region. Right. So the center region, remember, is just the opposite. This is the region with the fatty acids. And they are going to be nonpolar. Right. So they are unlike water, unlike the heads. And so they they're do not love water. They hate it. So they're going to be hydrophobic, oh. right? So they hate H2O. 
Yeah. And one thing to notice is that one of the reasons that the phospholipids arrange themselves in this bilayer in a double layer um, is because it makes a lot of sense based on where water is located. So if this is the inside or interior of the cell, and if this is the outside of the cell, in both of those places, there is a lot of water. There's a lot of water outside and there's a lot of water inside the cell. And if we look at this picture, why is that convenient? Well, because the heads are actually facing out and they love water. Right. So the water that's found on the outside of the cell and the water that's found on the inside of the cell are going to force the phospholipids to automatically take on this structure. They right. have no choice because the tails want to get away. Right. All right, so let's talk about uh, an important vocabulary term here. So I see what is a selective what is selective permeability? Right, and this is a term that we actually explored on our bell ringer by looking at some pictures of colanders and bouncers and right. nose hairs. Um, so what does this mean? Let's actually break it down. So what does the term permeable mean? If something's permeable, what does that mean? If something's permeable, it means that it can pass through okay. or go over. And then what does it mean to be selective? Well, that means that I'm picky, okay. essentially. So I'm, I'm deciding what can and what cannot pass through. And does that definition make sense in terms of the phospholipid bilayer based on what we talked about, Ms. Hines? It does because the cell membrane lets some things through but not others. So let's go ahead and write that down. Okay. So my cell membrane or plasma membrane or fluid mosaic right. model or um, phospholipid bilayer, <laughs> remember its main job is to control what can enter and leave the cell, but it doesn't allow everything to pass without permission because it's like a bouncer in a club. And so we can say that a bouncer at a club is selectively permeable, right? right. It decides what can pass and what cannot. And we can say the same thing also applies to our fluid mosaic model, which is something that we want because if everything could just pass whenever it wanted to, there'd be no way to maintain homeostasis, which is a fancy word for balance inside the cell. Right. Okay, at this point, go ahead and pause the video and answer your stop and jot questions. Okay, so we've talked about phospholipids. Now it's time to move on to the second important part of the membrane, which is our proteins. proteins. All right, so some things to remember is that our proteins are actually going to be embedded in the membrane. Okay. So they're going to be mixed in with our phospholipids. And if we look at this picture here, I hope that at this point all of you guys can identify those weird heads with those mm -hmm. funky tails coming yeah. off. And you should already know that um, that's our phospholipid bilayer and that we have a polar phosphate head and we have nonpolar fatty acid tails. So you should already know some things about this picture. Right. What we're going to identify right now are these big blobs mm -hmm. that we haven't talked about yet. Right. And these blobs that come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes. These big blobs are our membrane proteins. And our membrane proteins are going to play a particular role and help our cell membrane do some very specific things. So let's talk about what those specific jobs are really quickly. Okay. Right, so now that we've talked about the basic phospholipid bilayer structure of the cell membrane, let's talk about what these proteins actually do. Okay, so the first main function of membrane proteins is transportation. So there are some substances, some molecules that have a really hard time making it across that phospholipid bilayer because they're really big. Um, so for example, big carbohydrates or really big proteins might need some help getting across and these proteins are going to be there to help them and we'll be talking more about that later. Yeah, the next thing is um, we the proteins have the ability to allow cells to talk to one another, so communication. So if Ms. Hines and I are both cells inside of an organism, we need to be able to talk to one another in order to make sure that we're doing the job that needs to be done for the actual organism. Right. And lastly, membrane proteins actually help identify the cell. And why is that important? Well, believe it or not, cells can actually recognize whether or not they're supposed to belong inside of an organism. And this is a really important function because, especially um, right now at this time of year, we know that lots of people are getting sick. Right. And the reason why we're getting sick is because things are being introduced to our body that should not be there. Right. And, and our cells have to have the ability to recognize what are the good things in the body and not attack those things and yeah. what are the bad things so that we can what? So that we can 
kill and destroy them. And it would be really bad if your immune system couldn't recognize which cells were yours and started killing and destroying your own cells. And there actually are some sicknesses that occur because of that. Yeah, unfortunately, lots of people suffer from autoimmune disorders because the ID cards either aren't there or, for whatever reason, the ID cards aren't recognized. Right. So go ahead and pause the video and answer your stop and jot questions. Okay, so we've arrived at the last main component of the cell membrane. We've talked about phospholipids. We've talked about proteins. The last main component is something called cholesterol. cholesterol. And here it is, hanging out. So, so go ahead and yeah. shoot it in on your paper, too. So I always, when I see cholesterol, I always think they look like honeycombs. It's the easiest yeah. way. Nothing else looks like cholesterol inside the cell membrane. So if we look really quickly, again, some things that you should automatically notice. We see these circular structures with these tails coming mm -hmm. off of them, so we know that that's our phospholipid. We have two layers of them, so what are we going to describe them as? They're a phospholipid bilayer. Then we have these big blobby things that right. kind of span the entire width of the cell membrane, and some of them are also sticking out on one end. Those are our proteins, and we know that those proteins have maybe three different jobs, right. transportation, communication, as well as identification. And then lastly, this weird honeycomb thing hanging out kind of in the phospholipid bilayer is going to be collapsed. So let's talk about what it's doing there. Yeah, let's go ahead and dive in. So the purpose of cholesterol is to help maintain fluidity of the that, membrane. That is a big word. Yeah, what does that mean? So fluidity sounds like the word fluid to me. Right. So what do you notice about fluids compared to, like, uh, liquid water compared to an ice cube? What's the so difference? So liquid water is flowing. That's right, and it can change shape, yeah. and it can interact with its environment to change its shape. Mm -hmm. Well, we want the same thing to be true of our cell membrane. We don't want our cell membrane to always be the exact same shape. We don't want it to not be able to bend or to be manipulated by things that are going on around it. If that were to happen, our cells would crack. And if our right. cells cracked, all the stuff inside of our cells that are vitally important for maintaining metabolism and homeostasis, homeostasis would ooze out and you would die. That would be bad. Um, the other important reason that the membrane needs to stay fluid is that if it was just solid, like an ice cube, mm -hmm. then nothing would ever be able to get across it. So by being fluid, things are able to get across the membrane. Exactly. So fluidity is a really important characteristic of the cell membrane, and there's only one thing that it maintains that fluidity, and it is? Cholesterol. And cholesterol is really easy to identify because what does it look like? It looks like a honeycomb. So go ahead and pause the video and answer your stop and jot questions.